In his original 1980 paper, Searle discusses some objections to the Chinese room that have been put to him by some colleagues in some of the talks that he had given. Well, in principle, objections to the Chinese room could follow these strategies. One possible strategy is to reject the intuition that Searle in the Chinese room does not understand Chinese. Um, another one is to concede that Searle does not genuinely understand Chinese, but then to find an alternative explanation for the lack of understanding, that is, uh, an explanation that does not rule out strong AI. Third would be to concede that the Chinese room does not genuinely understand Chinese, but to show how we might build up from the Chinese room to a system that does understand Chinese. Well, one of these, um, one of the most famous of these replies is the system reply that follows strategy two. Okay? And so this criticism is based on the idea that Searle, in the situa situation he described, does not play the role of the whole computing system. He would only be perhaps uh, analogous to the central processing unit or CPU. The ledger would also have a, a you know, would be a huge data database in long-term storage. The bins would be the, and, and the, the sketchpad would be the working memory. So Searle is only part of the Chinese room. All right? Searle is only part of the Chinese room. Moreover, you can't validly argue that the whole lacks a property because its parts lack a property. For instance, just because Al does not have commercial relations with North Korea, it doesn't follow that the company Al's work for doesn't have commercial relations with North Korea. Similarly, from the fact that Searle does not understand Chinese, it does not follow that the whole system, the whole room, including Searle and the books and the bins and the writing paper, does not understand Chinese. Proponents of this reply usually go further, saying that the whole system, man plus program plus bins and input and output doors, does understand Chinese, even though the man who is acting as the CPU does not. If you open up your own computer looking for the CPU, you will find that it's just one of many chips and other components on the main circuit board. So what the system reply underlines is, is that even if someday we have thinking computers, the CPUs of those computers will not themselves think. Rather, they will be parts of thinking systems. But self response is the following. Um, let the individual internalize all of these elements of the system. He memorizes the rules in the ledger and the data banks of Chinese symbols, and he does all of the calculations in his head. So the individual then incorporates the entire system. There isn't anything at all to the system that he does not encompass. We can even get rid of the room and suppose he works outdoors. All the same, he understands nothing of the Chinese and a fortiori neither does the system because there isn't anything in the system that isn't in him. If he doesn't understand, then there is no way that the system could understand because the system is just part of him. So, since Searle has memorized the book and internalized the functions of the bins and the scratchpad, there is nothing inside the new Chinese room but Searle. Searle is simultaneously implementing the CPU and the other components. So if the system's, the system's claim were correct, the whole system understands Chinese. But now Searle is implementing the whole system and he still doesn't understand Chinese. Some authors, for instance, such as uh, uh, Ned Block or Ray Kurzweil, um, have put forward a version of the system's reply, which is sometimes known as the virtual mind or virtual system or virtual agent reply. So here's an example due to Jim Pryor. Even if a single physical computer is, is, is running, there might be more than one distinct subsystem or agent operating at a given time. And those systems can have totally different properties. For instance, suppose that you have a Mac, but that you have a software um, that allows you to run Windows on top of your, of your Mac OS. So now consider two different systems. One is composed of Macintosh OS and all the programs it is currently running, including the emulator program. And the second includes uh, the Windows OS and the activities uh, of some of the programs right, that it is currently running. So the Windows processes are in some sense included in the workings of the Mac software. However, 
the Windows software can be in some states uh, uh, without the Mac, thereby being in those states as well. For example, suppose that the Windows software crashes and becomes unresponsive, um, while the Mac software, including the emulator, keeps running. Well, it's just that the emulator, that the emulator window would display a crashed Windows program, but the, the, the Mac system has not crashed. Likewise, when Searle memorizes all the instructions in the Chinese book, he becomes like the Mac software, and the Chinese room becomes like the emulated Windows software. Searle fully incorporates the Chinese room software, but that does not mean that Searle shares all of the states of the Chinese room. More abstractly, you could say that Searle is housing two distinct intelligence systems. It's like he has multiple personalities while he's in the Chinese room. One would be the Chinese understanding system, and the other is Searle's old English-speaking self. Another strategy is what is called the robot reply. And people like Jerry Fodor have put forward uh, this line of thought. So proponents of this view usually hold a particular conception about the nature of meaning, just called semantic externalism. Um, in this view, words that refer to objects in the world come to have the meanings that they do uh, by virtue of causal connections that obtain between the words spoken and the objects that the words name. Right? There are causal, causal chains, so chains of cause and effect that link, um, say, my utterances of dog and then dogs out there in the world. So even if a computer has a program that allows it to prove theorems about cows and compose verses involving cows, if that computer has never been part of causal interactions that eventually reach out to actual cows, then cow will just be an empty symbol for the machine. So the problem would be that a lonely computer sitting on a desk and Searle in his room, with respect to the Chinese characters he is handling, well, neither of them has the means of having the relevant interactions with the broader cow-containing world. So the solution, according to the, the robot replies proponent, is to put a computer inside a robot, so as to operate the robot in such a way that the robot does something very much like perceiving, walking, and moving about. So perhaps put the whole Chinese room uh, within the head of the robot and equip the whole thing with sensors such as cameras and actuators such as artificial limbs. In this way, in the course of interacting with the world, Searle's uses of uh, the Chinese character for cow will eventually come to actually be causally related to cows. And so his use of the symbol will finally be meaningful. Well, Searle's response is, well, this is more of the same. Uh, maybe now the Chinese room receives inputs from a camera and its responses are translated into bodily motions. But as long as the central processing is done by means of formal manipulations of symbols, the situation hasn't really changed with respect to the original scenario. So the images received from the camera lenses have to be eventually be encoded in a digital format, such as a series of ones and zeros, so to speak, so that the algorithms can operate in them. Likewise, in the Chinese room, cow images will have to be encoded as uh, squiggles and squoggles so that they can fit the format of the ledger book, so that the relevant rules can apply to them. Okay, there are other objections mentioned by Searle, but I'll let you explore them on your own. Well, cheers. Mm -hmm.